Hey, this is uh, John Eason, and uh, you're listening to Hank Jr. on Hank's Corner. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of Hank's Corner. I am Hank Jr., part of Hank Jr. Productions, where I'm documenting life's moments through photography, videography, and now podcasting. And we are getting very close to our 100th episode here on Hank's Corner. And all my episodes are always special, but definitely this one here. Uh, I want to uh, bring on a veteran, a father, a musician. Please welcome John Eason. John, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, brother. I'm doing good. How about you? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. And it's so great to have you on here. So, so John, the, the first thing, uh, you know, I want to say is that, uh, you know, I came across you through Brian Judy, Brian Judy, uh, for those who follow me know he puts on freedom jam at least once a year up in the St. Louis. And, and I did, if you can see where my, my freedom, uh, jam shirt to, uh, to support this, uh, oh, yeah. thank, thankful that he, he sent it out, but, uh, uh, I, can he, he didn't get a chance to uh, message me back. I always like to hear if he's got any crazy questions or stories uh, about the artist. But since he did it, now you have the opportunity to tell me, is there anything about Brian Judy that uh, we should know about uh, that he, <laughs> he might find a little bit? I uh, uh, don't tell him that. Well, I'll be honest. Me and Brian have not actually got to meet in person yet. Oh, okay. uh, coming up March 3rd, I'll be playing up there at the Two Shamrocks in St. Louis. And that'll be our first time getting to meet. But uh, the one thing I can say from the minute I met Brian over the phone and then we've, you know, talked back and forth quite a bit and I've been on the Freedom Jam stuff um, is that, man, what a huge supporter of music and artists and veterans. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't run into that every day. A lot of people say, oh, man, cool, good job. And they might share this and that. But Brian just goes out of his way and, uh, and everything to really – support these artists and support these veterans and i was just kind of blown away by his passion um yeah so. and i may try to give him a hard time just because you know we we've kind of known each other now for a couple of years but you know i am honored to be part what little part that i am of freedom jam and uh you know any time that i can get out there and support what he's doing i like to but even so i i definitely want to thank you for your service you were in the uh, air force i believe for eight years correct Air Force eight years, yes, sir. Okay, and I know you had a, a couple of tours, or at least a couple of tours, and, you know, it, it, it is something that, uh, you know, veterans do not get thanked enough. I know that we thank and clap sometimes at the, uh, you know, arenas and stuff like that, but I think when it comes down to it, uh, we don't really thank you guys enough. So, you know, the best that I can do it is I, I definitely want to thank you. I, I appreciate it, and. Uh, I mean, it's it's always appreciated. You know, sometimes it, it does feel a little awkward because we we did it because we wanted to um, mm -hmm. and everything. But it, it is always nice to to hear the thank you, and, and I appreciate it. And you know, there's there's a lot of guys out there that really did a lot more than I did, and uh, and gave up so more, and, fa and families who gave up so much more that uh, those are the ones to me that they just don't get the recognition that uh, that they deserve. Yeah. And uh, like I said, I, I, I try to do what I can in my little uh, corner here uh, coming out of Tampa Bay, Florida. But, uh, you know, I, we, we definitely appreciate that. But not only, you know, was that, but, you know, as I listed, you're a veteran, a father, musician. We'll talk a little bit about the father later on. But the musician part of it, you just recently released a song called Last Damn That I Gave, which I'm enjoying. Tell us a little bit about that song. Um, <laughs> so, uh yeah, we, we did just release it on Friday. Um, it's out there anywhere you stream music right now. But uh, we wrote it at a writer's retreat. Um, it was my first time going to a writer's retreat. And I wrote it with my uh, my good buddy, Zach Hennard, and a friend of ours, Davin Roberts. And it was kind of funny. Uh, you know, everybody got to the retreat, and there was food and whiskey. So good times were had the night before. And we all stayed up late playing music and passing the guitar around and doing stuff. So the next morning and, and after we were supposed to get up right, uh, luckily I don't get hangovers, but I think a lot of people were feeling the effects of, uh, of the drinking and hanging up late. And, um, 
I said, well, let's just do this. Let's just write three chords in the truth. Let's just kind of do it like Willie said. And uh, this really magical song came out of it that I, I, I've always felt was something special. And uh, we put it out there in a video I don't know, like two years ago. And then all of a sudden one day it just kind of took off on its own. And it wasn't a massive number as far as some of these really famous musicians and artists. But for me, it was a big number. Um, and it jumped up to 32,000 views just organically on its own. We didn't advertise it. Um, we didn't really do anything besides just put it out there and let people try and digest it. Yeah, and and I think that uh, you know it, it's it, it's a great song, and and that's why it is you know getting that those views that you're talking about. You know, pe people know a good song when they hear one, and uh, I love hearing that story behind it because you know sometimes you you hear different things, but you know that sounds like a little fun way on how how that came about. Yeah, it, it mean like I said, it was um, at the time you know it was kind of like okay, whatever. We wrote a song but I just kind of knew something was great about it. And I remember the first time I played it out for some people at one of my gigs, you could just see the heads kind of perk up and the ears um, kind of start to listen. And I, I still, it tickles me to death to be somewhere and people come up after you play it and they go, Oh my goodness, like that, that's a song. And it's just such a great feeling to see something you made affect people and, uh, and touch people like that. Yeah, well, I'm glad that it's doing well, and it would be an honor if you would play that here on Hank's Corner. Sure, I can do that. You lied and you left me. You took everything that we had. You left me with the bills and the rent and the clothes on my back. With the fire still burning, I'm back where we said I do. Oh, I can't keep living without you. Well, I'm helping on destroying and slowly killing my saying. All the liquor, pills, and the pain, whatever I could get. Well, my life was the only thing that you didn't take. Yeah, I reckon you were the last damn that I gave. With this pen and this paper, I'm telling you to go to hell. When the fires quit burning and the flame in my heart is dead. By the time that you read this, they'll be burying my bones. Well, I'm leaving you this pain for doing me wrong. Well, I'm helping on destroying and slowly killing myself. All the liquor, pills, and the pain, whatever I could get. Well, my life was the only thing that you didn't take. Yeah, I reckon you were the last damn that I gave.
I'm hammering on the straw, yeah, it's slowly killing my sail. All the liquor feels and the pain, whatever I can get. Well, my life was the only thing that you didn't take. Yeah, I reckon you were the last damn that I gave. Yeah, I reckon you were the last damn that I gave. Welcome back to Hank's Corner. I'm Hank Jr. And you just heard John Easton's most recent song, Last Damn That I Gave. And now you guys know, if you hadn't heard it before, why it's doing so well. It's a great song. And John, your voice is just amazing. Um, I, I don't even know how to put it into words. But, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that just captures the the ear all the way to the soul from the first time that you just kind of let out the, you know, the, the first words to the song. I don't know how you do it, but uh, uh, that's awesome that you can do that. I'm jealous. I appreciate it. I, I do. Uh, I tell you the the people, when they come to me and, and say something like that, uh, it's, um, it's, it's, of course, it's, it's so nice to hear, but uh, I'm not used to it. Um, for a long time, you know, you get told, oh, you can never do it in this, this business. You'll never be this. You'll never do that. And, and it's a tough business uh, to not doubt yourself. And you hear these great voices out there. And uh, I, I I tell people all the time, I said, uh, I said, I don't think I have the best voice in the world um, or the most talent. I said, but I'm, I'm going to be here. I'm going to keep doing this. And uh, the thing that I'm going to keep doing is – singing songs from my heart and my soul and keep putting out real songs. Mm -hmm. And I hope that's the thing that will continue to, to, to carry me on through this. Well, that's awesome. And, and, and please continue to do that because I think it's definitely going to work for you. And I'm also curious though, you know, kind of on a, on a lighthearted side of it, you know, was that, uh, you know, how your voice just kind of progressed naturally? Because I, you know, I don't always say that to, you know, artists that come on that they have, you know, a really, really great voice like that. Uh, you know, I'm not going to, you know, just kind of <laughs> fluff, fluff to the artist, but there was another artist who had a, I don't want to say similar, but he had a gravelly voice and it was, it, it was really nice as well. And I told him that, and, and I kind of asked him a little bit and he says, well, that's what, uh, you know, drink and cigarettes will do for all these years and that's what he really <laughs> attributed to that he didn't think he would ever end up sounding that way but uh his his bad habits is what caused him to sing that way well um i can't say cigarettes or anything i've done it i've never been a smoker um and i could say looking back when i got here five years ago that uh my voice probably didn't sound like this but through working on on your voice and, and singing a lot and uh, doing this. I think you discover your real voice um, as you learn how to do this and, and figure out where you're going. Now I have drank quite a bit of whiskey in my life and, uh, and other alcoholic beverages. So I, I guess there's a possibility of, of it coming from that. But um, I mean, I think this has just kind of always been my voice and it's just developed into its own thing, I guess. All right. Well, that's awesome to hear. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just kind of funny how things do develop though, whether it's good, bad, and, you know, ultimately ended up, uh, with, with something great, but, you know, listening to that voice, you know, I can kind of guess possibly who your influences were. Uh, but I'm going to let you tell everybody who were your influences growing up, uh, uh, to get you into the music business. Oh goodness. Well, I grew up on gospel. Um, that's some of the first music I remember hearing um, and bluegrass. But when it came into really developing what I listened to and, and what I became a fan of um, Johnny Cash, Waylon Jennings, uh, Merle Haggard, George Jones, I love a lot of the, the, the really classic country music and um, um, Willie Nelson, Chris Christopherson, Towns Van Zandt. 
but then I lean over to the Southern, Southern rock side and, you know, I love Leonard Skinner, the Almond brothers. Um, and then I'm a big proponent of the blues as well. Um, you know, big muddy waters fan, love Howlin' Wolf and Howlin' Wolf had one of those real smoky kind of, uh, gravelly voices and uh, smokestack lighting is, uh, is a song I really want to do a cover of one day. And, uh, I've not gotten a band that I can do it with yet. Um, but my hope is as things progress and, uh, we can afford to put a band on the road full time as that will be a song we'll do at the uh, show. Cause, uh, I just, man, when he, he does that wolf howl and smoke stag lightning, I don't mm-hmm. know. It just, uh, it just gets me. Yeah. And don't get me wrong because I have a lot of people on the uh, show here that, uh, you know, does a little bit more towards the commercial side, towards the pop side of country. And I love it. And that's why I do bring those artists on. But there's sure. something to say for the artists that you mentioned. I mean, like, you know, George Jones. I mean, one of the greatest that you talk about Johnny Cash and then you move over to the other side, like you said, Leonard Skidder. There's just something about those that just can't be duplicated. No, I mean, there's people who, you know, that, that they take a lot of, um, of parts from them. But uh, I think if you're doing this business right, that you, you show your influence, but you bring your own voice and your own sound to it. Um, I always take it as a compliment when somebody says, oh, man, you know, you're going to fill so-and-so shoes um, because they mean it in the, in the best of terms. But at the end of the day, I you know, it always comes back to me is I've got my own boots to fill. Mm -hmm. And, and that's where I want to, you know, I want to take a piece of this that I loved and a piece of this and combine those things into my own. Um, One of the bands that out there that I really love right now is Whiskey Myers. And uh, I mean, to me, they, they have a lot of that Leonard Skinner type of sound to what they do uh, in the vocal and the thing, but they have their own sound too. And they're doing it their own way. So you can see the influences, but you see that them come out in it too. Now, I just wrote that quote down, um, you know, got my own boots to fill. I, I love that. I got it in quotes here and I'm going to save that because not since, and I'll be honest, not since uh, I heard Alan Jackson many years ago uh, when he was asked if he was going to fill George Jones's shoes uh, or his boots and he says, well, you know, I don't know about that, but I'd like to at least try them on. Um, you know, and that, that's always stuck with me all those years. And yeah. I like the way you put it though, that you got your own boots to fill. That That is a great line right there. You need to market that. Well, we, we may or may not have a song tucked away for the next time we record called Got My Own Boots. Hey, well, there you go. See, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm already a step ahead, so we can't wait for that to come out. But you do have some new music that is going to be coming out. Uh, one of them is called Helen Go Home. Now, this is interesting. Tell us a little bit about that one. So I, I won't go into a ton of it um, because I, I, I never want to disparage people's names, um, but this is based off a true story that I heard from Nashville. And you never know what parts are true. I mean, it, it comes down into this person said this and so on and so forth. But um, it's supposedly a true story based off a true story um, about this young lady who uh, followed a musician to Nashville. And um, she kind of got addicted to some things that she probably shouldn't be doing that none of us should be doing. But man, Sometimes they're fun. Um, and she kind of got used up and abused up, um, you know, by some people in the town. And the last thing that anybody ever heard from her, as far as I know, uh, in the story I was told was when they put her on a bus and they said, Helen, go home. Hmm. And so when I heard the story, I said, man, I, I really, I really like to bring some light to this, not put the people down, who took advantage of her because we don't want to talk about that at all. I want to talk about the girl. So we took some writer's liberties on what we thought might've happened with seeing the trend of where she was headed to. And, uh, and that's how we wrote the song. 
Oh, wow. And, you know, and that's one of the great things about country music and uh, whether it's country rock or, you know, even some good country pop is that it tells a story. And uh, I, I like it when it tells a story that, uh, you know, is kind of like a historical or, you know, just just something like that. But like you said, you're, you're taking liberties and, and, and making it uh, a, an awesome song. So, you know, once again, I'd be honored if you'd play for us here on Hank's Corner. Thank you. Born in a place that don't matter, speed trap town down south Alabama. Small world, small dreams, kind of girl don't never seem to leave. I can ride in a flatbed diesel, the devil that smile and a spoon and a needle. Black dog, lost nights, hotel rooms and Nashville lights. Well, I didn't go home. Oh, I didn't go home. Well, I didn't go Downtown Decatur, track marks, dead eyes, staring out the window, but she don't know why. Well, had to go home. Oh, had to go home. Well, had to go home. There's a potter's field east of the river with another gray stone. No one remembers, no name, two lines. Unknown female, here she lies. Oh, Ellen, go And that is the gritty, soulful voice of John East that you just heard singing Hell and Go Home. Here on Hank's Corner, I'm Hank Jr. Reno. I'm documenting those life's moments. And, uh, you know, once again, that's a, that's a great song. And, you know, I'm kind of thinking like the Highwayman and stuff when I'm hearing that kind of stuff. And it, it's just it's just kind of transporting me to a different time. And, and, and I'm so glad to be able to have you on the show to do that, to uh, reach out to our listeners. Thank you. That's a big compliment to be compared to the Highwayman. And as far as, you know, uh, writing these songs, when was the first time, though, that you sat down and actually wrote a song? And do you do you remember it? Well, <laughs> so I, I, did, I got asked that question a couple weeks back or about, about a month ago, and I had to really sit and think about it. Um, the first time, and I don't remember the song that I, I know I sat down and did something, I'd found a uh, old red arch top guitar that my dad had and it was definitely way out of tune and rusted strings and i had no idea how to make a chord or anything but i drug it out of his closet and i started banging on it and i was singing about indians um and that's the first time i can remember trying to play and write something but uh the first real song that uh that i wrote was uh over I think it was on my second tour. It was, uh, I believe it was in Afghanistan. Sometimes that stuff over there kind of runs together. But um, I'd gotten a guitar, and um, I'd spent a lot of time out 
on the flight line in a truck by myself. And so I had a notebook and I would take my guitar out there. And if I didn't have anything to do, while I was waiting on planes to come in. I would uh, try and uh, write songs and I could not play guitar at the time. I've, I've never been uh, what I would call a good guitar player. I'm a guitar beater. I just beat on them till they make good sounds. Um, but uh, I, I started writing songs about the military and the first song that I can remember writing and finishing was um, a song about Reveille on a, uh, a base at home because it gets played and people wake up to that. Um, and it was about a, a kid who's, um, whose dad was gone overseas and uh, eventually in the song his dad didn't make it back. And it was called The Sound of Reveille. Um, and never really did anything with it. It was just something I needed to get out of me. But uh, that, that's the first one I can remember doing. Wow. And, and, and I could just imagine, you know, uh, the, the power in that song. And, and it just makes me wonder, what, while you were out there deployed, did you play for the troops at all? Maybe just a small group or, you know, who did you play for out there, if any? I never got the opportunity to do uh, any of the uh, USO stuff or really play for people. Now, we would get together as friends. Mm -hmm. um, there were some guys who brought guitars over there who were just absolutely killer guitar players. And like I said, at the time, I was horrible. I could barely make a chord, and it took me a long time to switch back and forth. But, you know, as you keep working on it, and I would put the guitar down and come back and come forth. But uh, it's always been one of the things I wanted to do was go do a USO tour um and and play for my brothers and sisters uh and put on shows out there but uh you know it's it's therapy too over there uh because i remember getting together uh in the office when we had downtime and me and this one guy would play and we would just kind of just bang around on the guitars but we'd look up and there'd be like eight people just kind of watching us just just hanging out and enjoying it mm -hmm. um and then I remember sometimes in the morning time, uh, I'd get up and I'd take my guitar and this big sheaf of papers that I had was all the songs printed out that I was trying to learn. And I would sit out on one of the benches and people would stop and listen. And uh, I, I think we, uh, I, I don't, I've heard people, there's people that don't like music at all, but I don't understand that. But people, it would kind of connect with them. Um, and just hearing that song from home or, or something that you equated with kind of a normal life, um, it would affect you. And so, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and when you say therapy, I mean, I haven't seen it from your side, but I'm sure playing it and just kind of, you know, writing things down is, is definitely therapy for you. But I can see me as being one of those people gathering around that, you know, hearing the music is therapy, and especially being that far out there away from home, um, you know, it's, it's it's one of those things that just brings a lot of emotion, good bad, whatever it may be, is just something about music. And that's why I brought it up was, you know, how, how was it out there and how important was it for the troops? I mean, I know when we would have artists come through, uh, either the USO tours or individual artists that would come through and, and play things for you. I mean, in a, a very foreign environment to, to our normal everyday life, that was just a piece of home it was a piece of normal um a little bit of time i think for people to forget where you were at and and kind of touch home mm -hmm. so I, I would say in, important wise it was very important yeah yeah well you know thanks for doing that like i say you, even though you may not have been quite uh the guitar player out there but uh I, i'm sure that uh you were bringing comfort uh to others that are out there but Back home, uh, you also have a family, and, and the reason why I bring it up is because it's on your website, you know, as a veteran, father, musician. Tell me how important it is to be a father then, because it's right there in the center of who you are. Um, goodness. Um, I mean, I love my kids to death. Um, you know, my daughters, um, they both love music. Um, Ellie Mae and Callie Grace, and then I have a, a son, um, Benjamin Rain, and uh, th they all love music, and uh, I want to try and instill the same thing in them that uh, that my parents did for me, which was that that kind of love of music. Um, 
and I try and be in their life as uh, as much as possible. Um, unfortunately, you know, things do happen and marriages and things don't always work out. And uh, me and my ex do, you know, we, we are apart, but my kids live uh, in New York, so I don't get to see them as much as I would love to. But, you know, at the time I was going through a lot of things and I, I was not in a place to be a great dad. Um, and, uh, you know, at the time I couldn't admit that, but through music and, and a lot of different things and, and shoot, just growing up and, uh, and owning a lot of my own mistakes and things and dealing with mental illness and stuff, uh, am, am able to come and say, listen, this is the, you know, this is what it is. And now I just need to do what I can to be the best dad that I can in that situation. And to me, putting that father in there, um, you know, because you can get caught up in this music stuff and you can get caught up in living a lifestyle of going and drinking and partying and hanging out and all that stuff. And for me, almost having that in words reminds me that I've got another responsibility, too, um, and that I don't need to get caught up going too far down that uh, that rabbit hole. Yeah. And, uh, and I guess that's just, a, a a visual way to show that you're grounded in, in, in who you are. And, uh, you know, that's, that, that's great to hear. And, uh, you know, the, the thing about being a good father usually comes also, well, you know, being a hard worker and, uh, you do have a song that's going to be coming out called eulogy of a working man. Tell us a little bit about that song. And if you don't mind, I'd love to hear it. Sure. Um, this one's brand new. Um, we just wrote it about two weeks ago. Um, but it is in the running for the next time we go in the studio. But, um, we were all sitting on my buddies, um, where we ride at. And, uh, it was me, my buddy, Zach Hennard and Hal Dell. And I I'd come with kind of an idea about wanting to write something uh, about the everyday kind of man and the struggles and one of our things that we do is we really like to just chew on an idea and we get down to the the nitty gritty of it and find out, you know, what's the real idea behind this and what's the struggle. And we, we really toss it around and chew it up until we get to the core. And when it came down to it, we, we wanted to talk about that everyday working man who, who, you know, and this is across the United States and it's across the world, really. There's people out there, not just man, woman um, as well, that they're working paycheck to paycheck. And uh, I mean, it may be a a penny is what they're saving in the bank account every month. Sometimes there's nothing. Um, Sometimes you're robbing Peter to pay Paul and, you know, losing your job or getting injured or vehicle breaks. I mean, it could be as much as your phone bill goes up and you don't know what to do. And we really were, were thinking about that plight of, of that, that. And uh, I, I know there's a lot of people that could relate to this song. And so I, I wanted to put something, you know, the same way as other songs out there and to say that, hey, uh, you know, there's other people that understand that you, you're stressed and you might cry in your truck at night when you get home or after you put your kids to bed, you know, you just sit here with your head in your hands and just don't know what you're going to do. And so that's really where this song came from. Uh, and we came up with Eulogy of a Working Man. All right. Well, I definitely would love to hear it here if you don't mind. Yeah, let's do it. My name is Robert Wheeler out of Dixon, Tennessee. Twelve years as a roofer, good cash money every week to that ladder slip beneath me and i feel and broke my back i've been laid up spending money that i never really had that house of credit cards came crashing down on my dreams nothing left but lenten pennies in the pocket of my jeans I had a pink eviction notice I found stuck to my front door That's what happens when a working man can't work 
no more. Where, where will I go? Where there ain't no hungry and there ain't no cold. Why, why try it all? Spin your whole life running. Until you fall and get swept away like trash on the floor when a working man can't work no more. Now I'm sitting in the shadows, ain't no power, ain't no song. On the table, there's a marker, square of cardboard, and a gun. Well, a beggar's sign nor a butter, it ain't hard to pick. I'm so damn tired of dying slow. Hey, bullet, make it quick. Where, where will I go? Where there ain't no hunger and there ain't no food. Why? I try it all, spend your whole life running until you fall and get swept away like trash on the floor when a working man can't work no more. It ain't riding in a trash on the floor. I'm just a working man, can't work no more. No more. Welcome back to Hank's Corner, where not only do you hear music that's hot off the presses, but sometimes you hear it before it even reaches the pre presses. So uh, uh, that was John Eason singing Eulogy of a Working Man. Uh, once again, uh, I'm just loving it. I wish I could just have you sing all night. Uh, you know, that would just make my night. But uh, let me ask a few questions a little bit outside of music as well, because I know artists, when when they are always doing something music, whether they're playing, they're writing, they're practicing, whatever it may be. But when you're not actually doing any of all that, what are you doing and what are you doing for fun? Oh, fun. <laughs> it's a foreign uh, I mean word to most of us, I know. I spend a lot of time uh, with my son um, when I get the opportunity. I, I always try and do that. Uh, I am in a motorcycle club, um, so I, I do a lot of that for fun. But the thing that takes up a lot of my time right now is um, I just launched a lifestyle brand. Um, I've, I've been making jewelry for a while. Uh, I started selling it at shows because I didn't have anything for uh, women to buy besides a basic T-shirt. And I wanted to have something for the girls when they came up to shows and stuff. So I started making earrings and doing stuff and I enjoyed it cause it kept my hands busy, which kept my mind from racing. And, uh, I enjoyed it. So I kept learning more stuff and learning more stuff. And then I had a barbecue sauce line that I'd started and I sold that at shows as well. I said, well, man, I just kind of want to share me with people. So I said, I, I want to start this, this brand and the idea had been percolating and my business partner slash PR, um, Diana Dar, uh, slash, she does a ton more than that. <laughs> um, we decided to, to launch this. And so, um, a lot of times I'm making jewelry <laughs> when, uh, I've got spare time. In fact, that's what I did most of the day to day. Uh, I really enjoy that. And, uh, we also do travel stuff, so I get to go to restaurants and cool places and eat and talk about it and write things up. So we got that going too. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I usually talk about food on my podcast because I can't go with podcasts without talking about food. And I'm glad that you already have the transition to do because I usually just say, "Hey, let's just talk about food." But you actually <laughs> have a background in it. You you were a chef, correct? Uh, I guess you could say that. I I have a degree in culinary arts. Um. I never went into a restaurant and really worked my way up to what I would consider, um, you know, or what I respect as a chef. Um, I just didn't have the experience. 
of it. Now, do I love food and love cooking and probably have a lot more experience than, than some people? Yeah. Um, I, I did work at a couple places and I, I did do it for a long time. Um, and off and on through my life and going back to it on my own bakery for a little while. Um, then Hurricane Katrina destroyed that, which is what consequently led me into the military. But, uh, these days, um, I cook for friends. I, I cook for fun and family. And that's one of my favorite things to do when I'm off the road is to take things I've collected from places, whether it be, um, wine, booze, um, you know, uh, I go into different shops or I meet people. I pick up sauces and, and different locally grown things. Uh, and I bring it all home and I get to share that with people here, um, by, by cooking and hanging out and, and doing things. And that's one of my favorite things to do is, is, you know, is to do that. And I kind of feel like it's like me taking people on the road with me. Now, if I were to come and have a meal with you that you prepared and you were going to say, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to wow you. What are you going to cook for me? Oh man. Uh, goodness. That's tough. You know, I, I go through phases of what I really enjoy cooking. Um, and it's kind of wherever the winds of change are taking me. Um, recently I did a bunch of, uh, artisan Italian style pizzas for a friend of mine's uh, birthday party. And uh, those were, uh, I, I guess, pretty pretty gangbusters. Uh, people liked those a lot. Um, so th that's always a wow factor. But, uh, you know, um, I've been big on the, uh, the Asian bowls and stuff lately with uh, the bok choy and stuff. So we got caught up in some of that. Um, trying to think if there's just one thing that I really make that is the piece de la resistance um and i mean i gotta say I make a pretty good taco mm. I, I do a pretty good job on that um i don't know i, I think i would just kind of whatever whatever we were feeling that day you know my favorite thing is to uh to take an idea and then go roam through the grocery store and kind of let the idea percolate so I'd be like, what are you in the mood for? Probably. And like, all right, let's do this then. And uh, I, I never measure anything. I, I don't use recipes or anything. It's uh, I always think it's funny to see the thing on Facebook about sprinkling spices. And it says, uh, you know, I just sprinkle and dash until my ancestors whisper in my ear that that's enough. So... <laughs> That's awesome. And now I have two reasons to come see you, you know, obviously uh, for the music and uh, now with the food. But yeah. as far as music is concerned, should somebody come to a John Eason performance? What should they expect? I, I, I guess the, the, the thing I would say to expect is uh, expect to come to a storytelling. Um, I, I really don't consider my shows uh that especially what's the big right now where it's high energy just in your face all the time a lot of times like what's on broadway and a lot of those things um if you come and see me what you're gonna get is, uh, is a lot of stories you're gonna kind of wind down a road of of music and we touch on different things i mean i even play purple rain at shows um which Brian is a big mm -hmm. fan of. I've um, heard it. I've heard him request it several <laughs> times. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think that's the big thing with me. And that's that's a show I'd want to stay at. Um, not where it was eight beer drinking shot songs in a row. And, and don't get me wrong, I feel like that stuff has a place. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you're playing to a big party crowd and, and things like that. But the show that I really want to, be known for is yeah we've got some high energy songs and we got some songs that are up tempo but behind every song there's a story and there's a journey that goes along with it i definitely want to be able to see that and you know 2023 has started off pretty well for you i think uh what do we got to look forward to for the rest of the year more music um more music for sure uh we're we're in talks with a, a few things that I can't really say a whole lot about um, and nothing crazy, but they're good things for me and, and good things for the future. 
Um, I'm working with a great producer, uh, Joel Jorgensen, and he's the one who produced Last Damn that I gave and the other songs that we're doing that. So we're getting ready to go in to the studio, hopefully in the next month or so, and uh, work on new music. Uh, we'll have more stuff coming from, of course, that lifestyle brand. Um, and, and hopefully, you know, more shows, more getting on the road. Um, I'd like to get out there and, and start opening up for some people and really be able to focus on doing the original songs versus, you know, you know, beating your head against the wall at these four hour cover gigs. Um, those can really just beat you to death. And it's part of paying your dues in this business. Um, but it's one of the things I think that wears you out the most. So would love to, to try and get away from those in this, in this year. But I, I think the biggest thing is more stories and more music. Well, those uh, that are listening and watching this out there in the internet world, uh, you know, a lot coming out for John Eason this year. You're going to want to check it out. Please follow him on social media. You can also follow him on the website below, which is johneasonmusic.com. We're going to go ahead. I I want to just throw this in there. We'll go ahead and end the podcast with your purple rain to keep Brian happy. But, uh, you know, I can't wait to actually get up to see you um, as soon as I can. But in the meantime, if you ever want to be a guest on Hank's Corner, you're more than welcome to. Heck yeah. Well, I'm never meant to cause you any sorrow. I never meant to cause you any pain I only want one time to see you laughing I only want to see you laughing in the purple rain Purple rain, purple rain I never wanted to be your weekend lover I only wanted to be some kind of friend well, Maybe I can never steal you from another It's such a shame my friendship had to end Close it and let me guide you to the 